All right, so starting off, we have our fresh Waterline Pro project. So what we want to do is because we're going to be using Nanite, we're going to go into project settings and enable shader model six. Next, we're going to type RHI and for Windows, we're going to switch to DX12 and restart. Now that that's done, we're going to go, go into Quixel Bridge, Megascans, and we're going to go grab the gigantic sandstone terrain and import that with Nanite. And cool, we now have our new folder with everything and we're good and ready to go. Let's close these windows and let's make a new level called Shore Tutorial. Let's open it up. We're gonna save everything and let's start from zero. So we're lighting, we're gonna go directional light, snap it to zero, maybe move it a bit higher. Next up, sky atmosphere, snap it in the center, make our light movable next sky atmosphere whoops we already have that uh sky sky light that's the one we want uh movable real-time capture just we're updating everything let's grab exponential height fog and sort of group all of these together movable uh we're not going to use volumetric for now uh a good thing to also have is a post process volume snap to zero and we're gonna set it to unbound we're gonna be tweaking these a little later so let's start by adding in our water uh, we're gonna use the new ocean so let's grab the gen 4 gonna be dropping it in let's place it at zero just like before and initially when we hit live ocean there are going to be some background shaders being compiled so it could take a little bit of time things are looking good let's adjust our brightness so we're seeing the sort of true colors lighting needs to be rebuilt interesting okay we're good so we've got a pretty good looking ocean uh something that we can do is to make the visuals a bit better is to add a light direction blueprint this sort of gives us this scattering over here and let's snap it to zero place it up high something that we like to do is to grab the rotation here and paste it like so Next up, we could go into this material and just adjust the subsurface color. Let's multiply it by two, eight, something like that. And maybe adjust the angle a little bit. So we're getting this really nice looking waves, um, subsurface scattering effects. This is pretty good. Let's save it for now. And we could see that we have a pretty good looking scene. For clarity, let's set the screen percentage to 100. Uh, set this console command to zero. And since we're working on a 4K display, we can sharpen up the image a little bit and get some really nice, crispy, large waves. And yeah, no tiling or anything of that sort. Let's start with placing some of our uh, land mass. So for this example, we're going to use with meshes. Uh, we already kind of have a demo map already preset that shows you how things work with a um, landscape actor. But yeah, our shore system works with these massive meshes as well. So let's just start placing them around. Uh, let's see, we're getting this horrible darkness over here which is probably due to the fact that we don't have Lumen enabled. So if we press here, there we go. Our landscape is looking a bit better. Uh, just to make things a bit more interesting, we tend to like to squish it a little bit like so. So we have a bit of a gradient here and let's make our water a little bit more clear. Now the easiest way to do that would be to edit the shallow water clarity and deep water clarity parameters a bit oops uh, 
uh, something like this is pretty good for now. Let's save it and close it. So what do we need to do to get our shore in working order? Let's go back to our waterline, uh, look for ocean shore. And since we're using the Gen 4 ocean, we're going to grab the Gen 4 actor. Uh, we can place it pretty much everywhere, but for this case, so long as it's enclosing, encapsulating the islands, this is pretty much what we want. Next up, we want to tell um, what it should capture. In this case, we want the shore to be gener generated around uh, this sort of hill here. Next up, which water body from the drop down menu, we can either select our ocean or just with a little eyedropper tool and we're good to go. So now if we press force update, we'll notice that nothing has happened. Well, that's because we just need to enable our shore in these three materials here. If we search for, whoops, shore, there'll be a parameter called use shore manager data, enable this. Let's just do it for all the materials. It's just going to save a few things. And there we go. Pretty much out of the box. We already have a nice looking working ocean. So let's adjust uh, the water clarity a little bit more. So for shallow water clarity, something like maybe 0 0.4 and for deep water clarity 0 0.03 it's going to give us some pretty nice looking results save this and for now maybe we can adjust the height of this a little bit just so we don't see this sort of harsh edge and this is this has hidden it fairly well though we can mess with the parameters a bit more now that we have adjusted the height we can hit force update again and we could see that our shore is looking good. But for example, what happens if there's an area where we don't want waves like here, for example? Well, it's quite simple. First, we need to go to our uh, project settings over here and search for custom depth stencil pass enabled with stencil is what we want to have. Once this is done, all we need to do is grab something any shape can do, like a big cube or a sphere or anything you want. We just need to make it really big to make sure it covers the area where we do not. Oops. Been and really just cover this little sort of uh, cove where we don't want waves and extend it a bit more to the sides. It's looking good. So next up, if we select our shore manager, you're gonna find here that it says block stencil value two. So this is the value, we could change it here, but for our blocker, which is what is this going to be, we're gonna look for, uh, whoops. Render custom depth pass, enable that, and custom depth stencil value too. Uh, depending on your project, you can set these to be whatever you want. Let's increase the size a little bit more just to be safe. And finally, we want it to be uh, visible in, in scene capture only. Once we enable that, we're good. So let's update our uh, shore and nothing happened. Well, that is because we also need to add our cube to our list of capture actors. And if we do that now, force update, and we could see that we no longer have shores in this area. So let's see about bringing back some of that foam. Sometimes it's easier to just hide the landscape actor, just have a better look at what's happening here. And we could see that we're getting some foam, but we sort of just want to push it out a little bit more. So let's increase the foam the gravity level let's lower that to five and level blend oh we could see that we're seeing some foam here so this is good and we could just sort of dial it in here and adjust the values like so now, if we bring our landscape back in, we could fine tune this a little bit more to our liking. 
something like so. Until we have something that we like. And things are looking a little bit rough because of the so sort of tiling that we have, but this is something that we can adjust in the overall water material. If we go here with our foam settings over here and foam tiling, basically, let's adjust the tiling to something a bit more appropriate to this scale, like 4000. And there we go. We have nice looking rolling waves, foam, and everything. And in case we want to make any modifications, like let's just grab and paste this over here. Can adjust it, move it, squish it more if needed. Well, all we need to do, is select our uh, shore manager and add our another landscape to it. Force update, and there we go. This has Shore 2 now. And something else to note is if you're using Waterline Gen, the Gen 4 Ocean Actor, you can switch from an FFT simulation to a pre-baked FFT simulation really fast just by going for something like, uh, let's go for baked ocean simulation and, oh dear, but what happened? All of our ocean went away. Well, sometimes if, you, if this happens, you just need to generate force update the shore manager again, and there we go. We're no longer simulating an ocean, we're using a pre-baked texture. And there you go, this is pretty much it. And yeah, this is the final project. We made some small adjustment to the positioning of the landscape masses. Uh, we also enabled virtual shadow maps to get more details of the landscape. And I believe we may have also made a small change to the shore manager. Let's see, we, there is a very nice parameter here offset water level. The default is 50 and that kind of shifts the shore a little bit. So you can see by default the waves are spawning really close to the shore. If we set that to zero, this kind of pushes them back a bit more and you have this kind of nice uh, surf going on here. And also the FFT simulation here is running at 1K, which is probably a bit higher than what you would probably need. Uh, when you left us off, we were running it at 512. And yeah, thank you for sticking with our tutorial. Go make awesome things.